Good morning and good Saturday to you. I hope you're doing well. It is a crisp but beautiful winter morning here in the nation's capital. I'm uh, just out for a morning stroll, gonna go pick up some coffee, uh, just enjoy the sunshine a little bit. And I'm gonna head over to uh, the National Portrait Gallery, one of my favorite museums here in the city. Go check out a piece that I haven't seen in a while but is one of my favorite, <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. One of the, my favorite things I've ever seen. So uh, I'm gonna go check that out and probably talk about that today on the story. So the work I'm going to go check out uh, was produced by a man by the name of James Hampton. Uh, James Hampton was not an artist. He was actually a uh, custodian, a janitor here in Washington, D.C. He'd been born in South Carolina, uh, moved up to D.C. in the late 20s. Um, and then in the 40s, he was actually uh, drafted into the Air Force and uh, served in the Pacific, first in Hawaii and then out in Guam. And it was in Guam that he had the first of his uh, visions from God and uh, basically built his first shrine. After the war, James would return to Washington, D.C., and in 1950, he started renting a garage. Uh, very similar to these ones here on Blagden Alley. His was actually on 7th and M, where the convention center now stands, so the property is no longer there. But inside this little one-story garage, he would start toiling on something for the last 14 years of his life, unbeknownst to any friends or family or co-workers. In fact, when he died in 1964, the landlord came to clear out the property, and when he opened up the door, what he found was quite surprising. What James's landlord had come upon was uh, something that James had been pretty much working on secret for the last 14 years of his life. A piece that he called the Throne of the Third Heaven of the Nation's Millennium General Assembly. And if you think that name is intense, wait till you see the work. tomb with all the gold and silver shining everywhere but very quickly that old uh, tale that all that glitters is not gold became very very true for him and it turned out it was just old furniture wrapped in tinfoil and so not knowing really what to do with it he contacted uh, his next of kin which was his sister she came up to retrieve the body of him but had no interest in the giant shrine in the garage uh, so he put an ad in a newspaper and luckily some local artists uh, took note of it and uh, it kind of traveled around for a little bit and then in 1970 it was donated to the Smithsonian where it's been sitting ever since. 180 objects make up the throne of the third heaven of the nation's Millennium General Assembly, most of which are inscribed with various quotes from the Book of Revelations. The centerpiece is a seven foot tall throne built atop a maroon cushioned armchair, at the top of which is written the words, Fear Not. The pieces are made from old pieces of furniture and scavenged materials like glass jars, pieces of mirror, light bulbs, and cardboard, all covered in aluminum and gold foil. Hampton described the work as a monument to Jesus in Washington, and small tags hanging from the various pieces note the encounters James had with the Virgin Mary, Moses, and even Adam, who visited him on President Truman's inauguration in 1949. In addition, Hampton wrote out 108 pages of notes titled The Book of the Seven Dispensation, in this, Hampton recorded a second set of commandments which he believed God had given him to pass along because man no longer followed the original Ten Commandments. Unfortunately, Hampton wrote this book in an unknown script of his own creation that experts have been unable to decipher to this day. Now, even though he kept his work secret from friends and family, apparently, he did attempt to get it out into the world on a couple of occasions. He had reached out to some local churches to see if they wanted to use it as a teaching tool. None of them uh, took him up on that particular offer. And then he also reached out to two uh, reporters and had them come over to the garage, but neither one of them apparently deemed it particularly newsworthy what he was doing, and so uh, no articles were ever written. So his attempts to get the piece out into the world during his lifetime unfortunately did not work out, which makes it all the more ironic that after his death it would end up in the Smithsonian where for over 40 years probably millions of people have seen it. If you spend enough time in that back room at the Smithsonian, you're going to hear an awful lot of different reactions to James Hampton's work. Some folks think he's a genius, other folks think he's insane. Uh, some people see a beautiful piece of artwork, other people just see a bunch of furniture wrapped in tinfoil. When I think of James Hampton, the word that comes to mind for me is inspiration. Uh, he clearly was extraordinarily inspired to do what he did. And like all inspired works of art, when I look upon it, I'm given that amazing feeling of both joy and excitement, of confusion and understanding, of sort of mysteries, but also sacred truth that can only be described as awe. It's an awe-inspiring piece of work. I won't pretend to say that I know what the throne of the third heaven of the nation's Millennium General Assembly does, but I'm glad it's doing it. <laughs> 